I'm going to share with you everything I've learned in the last year of my Dutch Bucket Curl to get hydroponic results indoors using lights like this. And I'm going to hold a double A AA battery beside all these things just so you guys can see the size of the produce I'm getting. And this one's just got me blown away. You know those little red radishes you get in the store? Take a look at this puppy. They grow so big, it still blows me away. At this point, I'm just leaving this one grow because I'm curious to see how big it's going to get. Now, whether you want just kale for salad, or uh, you like produce that you can't find in the grocery store, or if you have some spices that you can't find around, like summer savory, indoor growing is a great solution for this. Now, if you're wondering how flavorful is the stuff that you grow inside, if you compare it to grocery store, there is no comparison. This stuff is way more flavorful. In fact, I'm willing to grow strawberries from seed for that reason. Now, if you're looking at beginning to do this, the first thing we're gonna look at is lights. The light will state the size of your platform, uh, drainage, how many pails, etc., etc. Now, if you're thinking you got a nice bright window or lots of glass, it's not enough. Let me just save you a lot of my headaches over the years trying to do this. Buy big lights and you'll win. Now, the lights I have here, they don't even make them anymore and there are much better lights out there on the market. Stay tuned for the end and I'll tell you guys all about the, uh, the changes I would make to this system or things I'm changing in the future. Now, here's an on and off, just so you guys can see how much light these things actually pump out. And these are what I would consider weak by today's standards. And this room is bright. There is direct sunlight coming in this room right now. So I made a platform based on the lighting supply, which is 36 by 36. On top of there, we're gonna put a five gallon pail with a lid. Inside, we're going to connect all the pails with PVC tubing, and we're gonna use rubber grommets to make sure we don't get any water leaks. These grommets that I've found for three quarter inch PVC, uh, one inch hole uh, is just perfect for these things. Now here you can see the connection of the pails. There's just a T and they're just pushed together so I can disassemble it as well. There's no adhesive on any one of these PVCs. Then take a uh, paint strainer bag and that goes inside of the pail and this is just to keep perlite out of your system which brings me to the grow media perlite that's exactly what i use fill up the pails after you got them all filled up that's where the lids go on and that is your no nutrient media that we're going to be growing in now that you've got your pails all connected you need somewhere for that water to drain to so what i've done here is i've gone into uh, i think it's a four inch tubing and just drill the hole in the top to fit it all together. Any of the fittings that you see outside here, they are glued together to make sure that there's no leaks. That drains back in the big tube and down into the reservoir. Now for the irrigation, I've got a submersible pump inside of my reservoir. Uh, supply goes to a Maros Wi-Fi switch, which I have automated. So I can turn that on and off with my smartphone, but like I said, it is automated. That line then connects up to PEX tubing. I have valves, one for the drain, and then two that go to either side so I can run my grows independently if I want. Now one thing I found out is the uh, shark bites. You can hook them up to Rainbird half inch tubing and there's my distribution that goes into the rainbird drippers and the quarter inch line one for every pail to monitor my nutrients i'm using this ph monitor which has been rock solid for uh i think it's about six months or so i've had this thing and i've tried a quite a few different pH meters. You don't have to buy this fancy one. You can still use the uh, general hydroponics uh, pH test kit or another reliable pH method, but this is something I overlooked like crazy at the beginning. You don't want to chance out on checking pH. I personally look after it every day or two. You do get a pretty good handle on what the nutrients are doing in the system after a little bit of use. The nutrients I've decided to use right now are the general hydroponics flora series. I'm using the flora micro the grow and the uh, bloom. Additionally, I'm also supplementing with the Armor SI and the Cali Mag. And the reason I do this is before I added this into my reservoir, I was having trouble with blossom and rot on both my peppers and my tomatoes. This has cured that. I haven't seen a single one since. Here's my current mix per gallon of the nutrients I just mentioned. You'll know when it's time to change the nutrient solution. If you're monitoring your pH and your EC or your PPM, your nutrient levels, you'll see there's gonna be a time somewhere during probably about seven to 10 days where it's just gonna stop taking nutrients. That's gonna stay the same and the pH will stop fluctuating. For me, that's super quick and easy with this setup. I just turn off the two valves for the irrigation, open the one valve at the bottom, empty my reservoir out using the uh, smart control app for that switch. And then once I have it done, I simply fill it back up with RO water and take my nutrients one at a time into the reservoir. Now I do also have a circulation pump, so I let that run for a few minutes 
after every uh, nutrient goes in along with I chase it with another gallon of RO water just to make sure that nothing is going to bind up. And here is what it looks like after a water change. My value is 6.47 and 1300. Now don't rush uh, changing pH the day that you do the nutrients. As long as it's between 5.5 and, and 6.5 and for your pH, just leave it alone, check it the next day and adjust the next day. As long as it's within that range. You don't want to start chasing pH. That's a dangerous, dangerous thing. Another thing that you're going to probably want to do is put some kind of way of tying up your plants. And I found these little clips on uh, Amazon. And what I do with them is I put a string up uh, to the top of my grow and just clip them around the uh, plant stalks like you see here. Most everything grows really good until it gets about uh, two feet tall, maybe three feet tall. And my last pepper plant I did not do this with because I was thinking, ah, it's sturdy and staying up on its own. Everything will fall eventually. They just get too big. This will keep them growing in the right direction. And it also keeps your grow much more organized as to what's growing in each pail. Things that I would change in this setup, or that I'm looking at changing actually right now, lighting is one. Uh, the blurp lights get really annoying when you're working in the grow room. And there's a couple of good ones that I'm actually looking at I will be testing the spider farmer here shortly and I'm thinking also the budget light that I might have been better off getting is a hydro farm but I don't have one of them coming. Another thing that I think I'd like to change as well is the nutrients. Now this has been working for me but I think there's better out there. There will be a test of master blend coming up shortly and that might get me changing to that so I will try that out. So things that I'm looking to change for the next year. If you do have any questions leave them down below I will try to get back to all of your questions.